Hello viewers, my name is uh, Omoyele Shore, and we're reaching you live from New York City again on Asara TV. And uh, today we are taking you to another West African country, French-speaking Togo, to talk about what has been going on there. That's a very, very small country sandwiched between the country Ghana and Benin Republic. And, you know, usually between Nigeria and Ghana, that's the way I look at it. We have in the studio today a 22-year-old uh, Togolese activist, you know, pro-democracy activist who was born into activism. That's what she told me uh, when I first talked to her. Who's going to just break it down to us, our level, what is going on in Togo? As you probably know, uh, there used to be a dictator in Togo who suddenly died and had his, this dictator was replaced by his son dictator. So it was, uh, you know, like the Papa Doc and the Baby Doc scenario of Haiti. You have the, not, the Papa Gnasibe and, you know, the son, for Gnasibe, now in power in Togo. But the people of Togo has been fighting, you know, very seriously uh, to overthrow his regime, you know, have a regime change. And we have uh, Farida Naborima, if I got, got it correctly, in yes. the studio, who is based in D.C., who said... She's very determined and working with people on the ground to change, you know, the political uh, history of uh, Togo. So, yeah, welcome to Sahara TV, Farida. Thank you, Sorry. Thanks for having me. Yes. So, for our viewers who may not understand, uh, you know, what, 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 what's about Togo now that, you know, is of interest to the rest of the, the world you care about? Well, what the world should care about um, regarding Togo is that there is... Uh, a new uh, movement uh, that that has been kind of like quite active for the past two three years to to change history and to change the um, the, the the sad outcome of uh, 30, 45 years of dictatorship. Like since last year, the Togolese people have been so determined to finish with. 40, over 40 years of, of um, dictatorship and oppression, and the women have been quite phenomenal in doing uh, in doing such. They've been repressed. They've been uh, weakened in many ways, financially, uh, intellectually, and psychologically. But yet, they are so determined to 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 make this change come and to make things happen. That's what's happening in Togo and that's, right that's now. That's very interesting that the, this movement uh, in Togo now, uh, the, the pro-democracy movement in Togo now, are uh, made mostly of women. And that's Correct. that's uh, shocking. The, what, 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 where are the men? Correct. Well, the men are also active. The Togolese men, um, I will not say that they are kind of like retreat from the they, they retrieve themselves from the fight they are very active as well but the women have taken the lead for the past years because they've realized that for the for over 40 years the men have been in the front and things haven't been changing and their situation is very much deteriorating uh, especially for men who are activists they have a hard time uh, getting good jobs um, in Togo they are jobless so the women are those who provide financially for the families and the kids and things are getting tougher their children are doing well in schools uh, the, the students in college are not receiving any aid so these women have seen their social and financial situation getting worse and worse poverty keeps rising so that's also what really made them change uh, and decide to join the struggle all head for so you have women leading in uh, this pro-democracy movement mm -hmm. you also said you know uh women are better off financially mm -hmm. in, in togo than men so they are mostly breadwinners in their homes yes. uh you know what what's 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 responsible for that is it that women are more hard working or just they seem um, to get better rewarded in their line of business well i think the main reason is because uh for a long time in togo men do not Got, like they, they didn't, they weren't so much interested in commerce, trade, and businesses. They always wanted like office jobs where they can go in with suits and ties, looking neat. Uh, these European created type of jobs, teachers, administrators, and stuff like that. And unfortunately, these jobs don't pay much. Uh, maybe the most, the most money they will be making is if they are quite lucky, is three hundred dollars per month. Wow. That's the actually the highest paid 
um, public servants in Togo, that's what they earn. So the women are into commerce and trade and business. So for the past years, they have really built on their businesses and that's what made them very successful. Like that's what made, uh, we have very extremely wealthy Togolese women in Togo. Uh, and that is thanks to their business activities that men do not quite get, do not get along with so too much. we go to the reason why you're fighting, uh, why Togolese people are engaged in this uprising. Now is the fact that you have a president who is the son of the former president, late president, mm -hmm. Uh, who has just been in power and done nothing. How long has he been in power for? The father was in power, f stayed in power for 38 years. Wow. And the son has been in power now for seven and a half years. So when are you guys expecting new elections? We are expecting new elections in 2015. That's the presidential elections. Okay. But the legislative elections are to be held this year. Okay. Yes. So, so you do not have much hope in the electoral process, apparently. I personally do not have any hope at all in the electoral process because I can't trust uh, these kind of people organizing a transparent, democratic, and clear elections. Like, there is no way they will allow um, others to win. In, and as a matter of fact, they try everything possible to fraud the elections even before the elections happen. Like with the legislative elections coming in, we already have so many different uh, um, problems that, that have been um, spelled out back in the country. Like the electoral, they are giving, providing electoral cards to non togolese citizens and children who are in elementary school. These kind of things already prove that the the fraud has been started way before the elections. Well, so we go back to the movement by the women. Some of the strategies employed by Togolese women to fight against the government can be described as strange, like stripping on the street uh, in front of the police. Uh, well, how did they come to that, you know, uh, agreement that they want to use that as a tool? Is it cultural? Does it have any other significance other than just to embarrass, you know, or just to you know, attract some unusual attention yes. to, to their kind of protest? Mm -hmm. Well, it, I think it's a little bit of both. Okay. Uh, culturally, when a woman actually shows her intimate part in public to a man, it's like uh, a way of, uh, it's like, it's an abomination actually. It's, mm. it's uh, a way of um, casting like a spell in some ways on the person. Or casting a curse. A curse, yeah. Yes. A curse is the, be the, the best word for that. Yes, it's like casting a curse. But at the same time, these women for a long time have realized that nobody is listening to them outside of the country. Uh, people do not care much about their struggle and they realize that that will also be a way to grab uh, international attention and to get people know that in Togo things are going very bad and that women need help here. So it is a little bit of both. Uh, it's also culturally motivated, but especially politically motivated. Okay. Yeah. So you have played a lot of roles in helping all these women on the ground to get the images out uh, to, to the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. So, and I think somewhere in, uh, in our system, we have a collection of some of these images that will be showing okay. uh, in the course of the show or maybe after the show. It's, you know, how, how is that possible? How did you get images out? How are the women who are protesting get images to you? Well, and how do you then? Of course, I don't take these pictures because I'm not on the ground. Uh, most of the pictures are taken by journalists on the ground and other political activists. We have some activists who participate in every single demonstration and they record everything on video cams and their cell phones and they tweet some of the, some of the pictures, they Facebook some of them, but mostly they send them to us uh, via different communication means that I won't always necessarily reveal. And we do post them on, on social networks in order to get the world to, to, to have them. There are quite a few of us who, who do that. Uh, most of them are in Europe, but in America here, I'm pretty much the only one who wow. does that job, yeah. How, how, how big is the Togolese diaspora outside of, I mean, you know, do you have, where do you have most Togolese people? Is it in the US or, or Europe? Unfortunately, I can't, I can't tell you. I can't tell you because the Togolese government has to absolutely refused to, to count us, if I can say that. Like in 2010, they had a census. And during that census, we tried everything. We had a, a Togolese diaspora uh, organization called CMDD. 
Comité Mondial de la Diaspora Togolaise and they tried everything uh, with the government and even the European Union that was financing the census to have um, the Togolese um, uh, in living outside of Togo also being counted during the process, but the government doesn't want that. So they don't have any figure of how many Togolese lives in the US, in France, etc. But apparently it seems like the, the largest diaspora in, in the West, North America and Europe is in France actually. Okay. Yes, but I don't have any uh, precise data to give you on that. So let, let's go back to this movement. You know, mm -hmm. it, do you guys feel like you know, some of the protests you've done really, really achieved? Uh, uh, anything at all? Did you feel like, oh yeah, you know, so this protest we've done has done this and it's made the government more scared, you know, it's forcing their hands to release political prisoners, mm -hmm. it's making them become more transparent and accountable. Have you achieved any of those goals? Or well, what, what, you know, maybe I should ask, you what know, is the goal of the movement? The goal of the movement is to end a four decades old dictatorship, yeah, yeah. to end oppression, repression, uh, domination in Togo. Uh, in talking about achievements, I will say that you have achieved so many stuff, but the interesting thing about the Togolese government is that when they are when when they are facing strong opposition, they get worse. They don't get better. Like when you protest for something in Togo, when you protest for human rights, when you protest for more freedom, you only get the contrary. That's that's what has been happening. Um, the government realizing that the protests are becoming uh, something that they might not be able to handle in the future. They have tried several things in order to weaken uh, the movement, in order to weaken the women as well. Um, they have arrested many people in the process. Uh, they have also um, charged different political leaders in the process. So instead of trying to make changes in order to suit the demand of the people, they do the contrary. They are like, you know, if you guys want to be hard, we'll show you that you are harder. That's the kind of politics that the Togolese government does. Explain. Yeah. So if they are doing that, yeah. what do you intend, what does your group, what does uh, the movement on the ground intend to do to escalate the action mm -hmm. to also teach them a lesson? Well, the, the unfortunate part is that they have guns we don't. Mm. And uh, talking about teaching lessons, they have the ability to kill us and we don't. Wow. Uh, however, uh, people are so determined and that's the, the determination to finish with them, to finish with so much injustice that is that, that have kept the, the, the flame uh, alive till now. Uh, people have understood that the harder they are, the, the tougher they are becoming, it means the closer we are getting to, uh, to reach that goal. We know that there's no way we can really get rid of them uh, easily and we know that they are going to be uh, worse than they are right now but everything is expected and people are ready for it that is why the Togolese haven't been given up and interestingly the protests have started since 2010 every Saturday they have been protesting since 2010 and it's the up first time now? up till now yeah. every single Saturday they protest and it's only till last year when um, the Togolese uh, opposition coalition got bigger and human rights activists also got involved that the, mo the movement escalated and became bigger. But yes, last year wasn't the start of the, of the struggle. The struggle has been going on for years now and we can say that at the, as, at the stage we have reached right now, there has been a lot of progress. A lot of progress not in terms of what we have achieved in terms of the betterment of our rights, but a lot of progress in terms of we have succeeded at getting international attention. Now different human rights organizations and different international institutions such as the UN, uh, the European Union, uh, even and even the United States government, they recognize that the government in power, in power that is not democratic and the because people Because that's what I was going to ask next. Africans always look forward to or look up to yes. Europe and the US. Mm -hmm to support them when they are engaged in this uh, non-violent non and peaceful struggles yes. against their government. Are you, are you getting the kind of encouraging response uh, from Europe and uh, the US in terms of um, backing? You know, the Togolese have understood something. They have understood in 2005 that the international commu community is not going to be there to make the change for them. In 2005, they really counted on them. They really expected them to assist them during the process of democratization of Togo. That failed. But now what they want is not support, but what they want is to avoid these international organization to get involved and support the government because 
usually what you respect from these so-called human rights organizations or international organizations is that they will be standing by the people. But unfortunately, in the case of Togo, they have been standing by beside the government. So we are like, but, you know... Uh, yes, because it's very important to ask that uh, the government of France yes. plays this very destabilizing role Absolutely. In, in French West African countries, mm -hmm. of, you know, in Africa generally, where they're always propping up dictators and supporting them. Uh, I mean, you have them in Cameroon, still supporting Paul B. Uh, you know, several years after the guy ought to have uh, been forced out of power. They're yeah. the ones giving him the support and a lifeline to continue to oppress and repress uh, in their sub power. So, this, uh, do, you, do you have a problem with the French government, you know, playing that uh, uh, usual double game again yeah. in Togo? You know, I personally believe that officially Togo is independent, but in reality, Togo is still a French colony. Yeah. Uh, the French have a huge control of the Togolese government and Everybody knows they actually place them in power. Everybody knows that they provide them with the, the financial, military support to oppress the people. Uh, can you imagine that in 2010 when we had elections, different countries gave us so many different styles of support. Like the Americans, they provided us with money and technology to monitor the elections and stuff like that. The French government provided us with tear gases hmm. and and police cars, you know, wow. and guns. And that's what they provided to the government to organize elections. So what kind of democratic election they organize with tear gases and guns and police trucks, you know? So it just shows how, on what side the, the, the French government uh, has, been, has been playing for the past years. And unfortunately, um, the, it doesn't matter what, kind, what, what party the, the new French president comes from, whether it is the left or the right, they are all the same when it comes to foreign policy mm -hmm. towards African Absolutely. nations. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So now you, we come to you. Uh, I mean, you're 22 years old, if I'm correct. Almost 23. Going to 23. And yes. uh, you're engaging, taking on one of the most brutal regimes in Africa. Uh -huh. And you're not sometimes afraid, you know, for yourself and family back home. Uh, when it comes to fear, I always say that the the only thing I fear is to leave uh, and grow old in a country where no people people don't have any right. Mm -hmm. I fear that one day if I have children, I will leave them uh, in this world with a country uh, with such a backward regime. So I'm not afraid for my life because. Mm. I, there's not much that I can protect of it. You know, people die every day in car accident for this, of disease and stuff like that. So in most cases, the consequences of bad governments kill more than the bullets of, mm. the, of the oppressors. Mm. Uh, people die in Togo every day because of bad rules and the accidents is the, the main uh, killing machine in Togo, road wow. accidents. And then you have different small diseases, diabetes, hyper and hypotension and stuff like that. And because you don't have any health, strong healthcare system, people die of very simple diseases. So the bad government is killing us more than the bullets of the government. So hmm. even if I choose to live uh, uh, in, I don't know, in shadow, and not involve myself in political activity, I might still die if I live in Togo hmm. of of minor problems like if asthma for example i have uh, asthma mm -hmm. and i I, rem I recall when i was in togo and i have an attack i remember that one day i was having an attack and my mom has to search the city for two hours before getting me medicine you know wow. to help me and like if it was so bad maybe i would have passed out i would have passed away and that is because we don't have the basic uh um, health care resources in order to assist people so i'm not afraid of them in terms of killing me, the only thing I'm afraid of is them staying there and I having to live in a country where my rights are not respected and also where my life is constantly in danger. I will ask you, I mean, to tell our viewers that you're actually a student at American University yes. in DC, studying international affairs. Yes. And uh, at this point, I will let you speak in French. Okay. To, uh, people of Togo uh -huh. who might be watching us or mm -hmm. who are in diaspora to tell them, you know, what they should do, what you expect them to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and just 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 say something to them. Okay. Uh, bonsoir à tous et à toutes. Um, 
Farida ici. Je voudrais en fait que vous sachiez que euh, le, changement, le changement démocratique dans un pays, ça prend beaucoup de temps. Euh, ça prend des siècles dans certains pays pour arriver à, à, à un minimum de, de respect des droits de l'homme et, et à un minimum de... Euh, de restauration de, de droits privés et individuels, mais il ne faudrait jamais se décourager en face des, 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 des difficultés que nous avons parce qu'aucune liberté ne s'obtient, ne s'octroie par la voie facile. La liberté, comme on le dit, elle s'arrache. Les pays d'Amérique latine sont passés par la même chose que nous. Ça leur a pris des centaines d'années, je dirais, pour obtenir le semblant de stabilité qu'ils ont aujourd'hui. Mais ils y sont arrivés grâce à leur détermination et grâce aussi euh, aux leaders visionnaires qui les ont dirigés pendant tous ces temps-là. Donc moi, je voudrais que vous soyez, vous soyez tous engagés dans ce combat parce qu'il est important que nous réussissons à, à, rebattre, à libérer d'abord notre pays afin d'avoir la possibilité, l'opportunité euh, de, de le reconstruire. Il y va de notre... De de notre dignité humaine et il y va aussi de la fierté de notre nation. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, the very short translation of that is Aluta Continua Victoria Asada. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Is there a Thank way you. people can follow you on social media? Do you have Facebook pages? Yeah, you know? sure. Uh, do you have a I, Twitter account? I have And uh, in order, do you have websites and mm -hmm. places where people can just pick up information about what you're doing mm -hmm. and how they can get information enough to empower them? Yeah to chase out uh, the crazy bad heads. People can always go. look me up on Facebook. Um, my name Farida Naburima, on Twitter Farida and capital N, mm -hmm. and they'll find me. I don't, I'm not a full-time tweeter, but I tweet full-time when needs be. Yeah. But I can say that I'm almost full-time Facebooker, and they'll always have me there putting on new information regarding the struggle in Togo and in Africa as a whole. Thank you so much for coming on Sarah TV, uh, Farida, and uh, we hope uh, you'll keep in touch with us. You said that uh, some protests are supposed to happen, mm -hmm. uh, as a matter of fact, some last week, and there will be more. Yes. So we, we would uh, look forward to getting more information from you okay. and possibly bring you back from time to time to keep uh, people updated about uh, the struggle in uh, Togo to have uh, democratic elections and choose the leaders that you deserve and that you vote for as opposed to... <laughs> An oligarchy that uh, use, that keeps repeating itself with, by replacing father with son yes. uh, in Togo. So do not give up and uh, keep up the good work that you're doing and hope to see you again on Sarah TV. Thank you very much and thank you for having me. Thanks to all the team of Sarah TV. All right, viewers, it's been a Sarah TV live here interview uh, with Farida Naburima, a democracy activist from the country of Togo, you know, very, very strong lady who has asked that everybody in the Togo and West Africa and Africa as a whole have a duty uh, to restore democracy and respect for the dignity of the people of Togo. So please do not go away. We have a lot more coming on our show today on Sarah TV Live out of New York City.